In this video, we're going to quickly cover how to fix the error that says an endpoint configuration section for contract whatever could not be loaded because more than one endpoint configuration for that contract was found. So the, here's the deal. We have a page that's calling a web service. This web service is converting inches to centimeters as I have it set up. So I want to know how many centimeters are in 12 inches. I type in 12. Don't worry about the other boxes. I've hard coded that. But I type in 12, I hit convert, and instead of getting an answer, Visual Studio pops up and it gives me this exception user unhandled with the message that follows. So how do we fix it? Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop. Uh, we fix it by, in, in, a, in a web application, we need to look at the web config. And you'll see in the web config file, if you scroll down a bit, there are a series of endpoint addresses. Now these endpoint addresses were configured or added to this web config when we initially added the connected service to our application. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, I have a preview, I have a video that uh, I recorded just prior to this one that describes how to integrate a web service into a Visual Studio 2017 C Sharp program. So I'm not going to recover that. If you want, you can go back and look at that video. Um, but in any case, we added the connected service there. The connected service added the endpoint address. Well, the problem is there are two different endpoint addresses here uh, that are configured. So they look fairly similar. One is a basic HTT binding, another is a custom binding. If we look up at some other web services I've implemented, we see a fairly similar pattern that's evolving. We have to tell it which one of these we wish to use. I'm going to go ahead and go with the first one that's configured for this web service. And if we take a look at the endpoint XML tag, you'll see there's an attribute here called name. And the value that you see is length unit soap. The one underneath it is length unit soap 12. So I need to specify which one of these two I wish to use. I'm going to go ahead and grab the first one. Now with that, I go back to my page that was giving me the error, the web services aggregator page. And you see how uh, when we're invoking a web service, we, de we declare a variable. Here I'm calling my variable client, and the variable is of this type. So unit converter is the namespace, and then length unit soap client is essentially what we were going to call a, a skeleton or a proxy that proxies the web service. On the right side, we have a constructor call. So we have the keyword new, and then we have something that looks very similar to what we have on the left side, except you see an open and close parentheses, which means we can pass something in there. And sure enough, when I mouse over, you see the IntelliSense comes up and it tells me there are four overloads, or in other words, there are four different ways I can invoke this, what we're going to call constructor. One of those ways accepts a string. And that string is the endpoint name that we just saw in our web.config. So I paste that in, I choose save, and now let's redeploy and see if we get better results. The page is up now. I put in length 12 and I choose convert. And we see in just a few moments it, re it returned with 30.48 centimeters per 12 inches. Quick summary to fix the issue, we look at where we're invoking our web service. And if need be, we go to web.config in a web app or app.config in a normal Windows app. We look for the endpoint that we wish to use. We grab the name of the endpoint, uh, the endpoint and we pass that in to our constructor call for our web service. So I hope this video was helpful. Thank you very much.